what just happened? I what a I don't even. I feel like there, we had notes prepped. We had a whole different idea of what this uh, this episode was going to be at halftime with that CCL game. Yeah, I was going to text you to say like, let's just finish watching the last ten up here and while just we record. record. Yeah, yeah. While, while the last ten happened. Uh, I mean, first of all, obviously, welcome uh, into episode sixty. Yeah, big uh, big number there, I guess. Um, <sighs> I'm still I'm still a little shell shocked. I I don't think I've felt uh, th- these types of nerves or or have sweated anything quite like this since uh, December in that MLS Cup game when that Mora goal goes in. Um, and I don't I I think I personally started sweating a little early. You know, even after their when they go two two or three two, you already begin to start crunching the different results, <laughs> and you're like, all right, what ruins the night? And you're like, yeah. okay, f- five. Five two ruins the night. I'm bad at math, so I kept be, I like kept bouncing between. <laughs> different... Already thought the night was ruined. Yeah, no, I was bouncing between. I'm like, technically, doesn't this mean that we're we're dead right now? Like we're dead in the water right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, NYCFC, why why do you do this to my heart? I think this is a a, a case of fitness like catching up to us. Mental um, fitness, though, like a lot of the things were just bad mental mistakes at work today i was like thinking about the episode and like some of the things that we might say and like one of the things that i think was going to be fun to point out was like how fun is it to have like an nycfc game like every three to four days at this point which has been like that for like two weeks now and it's like i only thought of it as a fan and i'm like this is awesome like i love that this is something that we get but then as this like clock ticks on in the the CCL game, I was like, oh, this takes you know a big toll on some of the yeah. players, and you don't see a ton of rotation when it comes to starting lineups from Ronnie, um, between the the handful of games that we played recently, and outside of Chanel, which was something that we were going to talk about. Yeah, and that's just something that I just like came to terms with in in the last minutes as you start to wonder like what is going on here um <laughs> period like just what is going yeah, what on what is actually happening and and what is going on um when ronnie almost does like a f- as big of a squad rotation as he can with the substitutions mid-game. yeah mid game when it's like 2 to 1 and i mean i'll i'll be honest i was sipping the tea that it was dead in the water the second away yeah. goal that we scored without a same. doubt i was like it's done same same as the announcers too yeah game's killed like I in that moment I believed it was dead but looking back I was like that that was way too early to sub that many human beings yeah um, even if you have class coming onto the pitch I mean it is hey bear still but these are these are guys nah, that haven't gotten I don't hot. I was going to point that out yeah. I didn't I didn't want it to be like a bad like to bash people cuz we've been playing well for the past couple mm-hmm. of games with the exception of the first two MLS games but like Everyone keeps saying, and me included, I was saying this too. I was like, oh, well, if Tati leaves, at least we have a bear. At least we have the attacking options. But, like, in in all of the minutes that he has played, what has he shown? Mm-hmm. He's not He's not been on the end of a special run. He's not had, like, a promising shot. He's not really distributed the ball well. Like, what are we waiting for from him? Because, like, he's shown nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. So, if Tati's gone, we're toast offensively yeah like period if hey bear is if hey bear is the only option we're leaning on yeah Yeah. and like dude it's it's rough if that's who we're leaning on because it was he didn't play well today he didn't he didn't create anything he didn't get like i said not on the end of a single special run he's not showing anything that we knew of him before yeah so we're a part of having that pipe dream oh i love let's say that i love him but like (laughs) this pipe dream that Everything's gonna be fine. That if he's we, gonna be twenty nineteen. Yeah, hey Bear. it's not. It's not the case. We've not seen it since the knee injury, which mm-hmm. sucks. Yeah, but it's the truth. Yeah, and going off of your point, you know, I think we've done the responsible thing of not uh, soloing in on like single players and starting to discuss their personal performances because with the the insane schedule that we've had, the rotation of lineups, you know, tons of different things that come into play. Um, when it comes to like deciding what a form a player is in but as we do get deeper into the season it, it becomes apparent that 
Um, there are guys that are not stepping up or are not in form at the current moment. And I think that's where, you know, you get the pass to talk about Hey Bear like that. Right. Or I think, you know, somebody else that needs to really be talked on is Acevedo, who I think potentially, I mean, he had COVID, so he did miss uh, a game. And then he came in late in the home opener. But today, like, he just, he looked awful as a starter. Um, he just didn't look great. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Hiber and Acevedo is, you know, we're not judging them based on the handful of games from this season. It's this season being an extension of their form in, a, in the last season. Mm -hmm. That's why we're name dropping them. It's not to like, you know, throw them out to the mob. That's obviously not going to be happy after this result. Yeah. Um, it's purely because their form was what it was last year. And it's extending into this year, and it's becoming a problem because if those guys are depth pieces, they're not quality depth pieces at this moment. Yeah, and they're taking you know minutes from people who are, in my opinion. Yeah, and you have to you have to wonder too what Ronnie thought Ronnie's thoughts are with some of the substitutions that he made. Um, like namely, I think the most interesting to me was that when he decided to sub out a midfielder for Keaton, he chose uh, Alfredo and not Acevedo. And I'm not saying that Alfredo was having a game that was like he needs to be in, but if you were to take one of the two guys out when they play a pretty similar role um, for Keaton, then I just don't know how it's Alfredo that comes out. Yeah. I have no clue. I mean, I, in my opinion, it's it's 100% the rest thing. The re yeah. They were... Every single piece that was pulled was pulled because they've played every single minute of every single game, just about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a lot of games. So, you know, it was 100% that. It was the idea that the game's dead in the water at this point. We need to get the guys off who play what an way too much. to make. Right? As me, as I made it too. Yeah. So I'm there with you. We all made it. I think everyone watching made it. Because mm -hmm. we were like, oh, we saw this last, literally last week. Almost we saw before this. the team was in Guatemala, we yeah. were like, we feel yeah. decently good about this. And so, you know, I supported, I supported every single sub when it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, from the minute that it happened, it just... It just didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. And I think really the the last guy that's worth touching on, and it uh, it's only worth touching on on this podcast for like specifically in my mind is because we've like definitely rated him in the small amount of minutes that we've seen him, but like Gloucester was just having a nightmare out there, dude. In my opinion, Gloucester was as perfect as you can be in that moment up until that last screamer mm -hmm. and i think at that point he was like okay i'm i might be slightly responsible for that because i didn't get a body on that cross yeah. so i think then he went into like self meltdown mode and that's yeah. when he really went stinko mode i think like, it was a, a little bit of his decision making too that had me upset like when he i think it was like the 90s like 92nd maybe the 93rd minute and he like took it down the field and instead of like going into a corner granted there is like a couple there's two minutes left, which is a lot of time to hold in a corner. Um, but you can burn some clock, and he just plays a ball in, like, right to their keeper. Yeah. And it's, like, instantly now uh, communication is back on attack. Yeah. And it's, like, I don't know. We our, our team was, like, trying their absolute best to give them possession, whether it was late Sean kicking it out of bounds with, I think, every single goal kick in stoppage time. Yeah. Um, or just carelessly giving it away with, like, a cross into the box, like uh, – like Gloucester, I don't know. It was like yeah. stressful. And in that moment, I could see, you know, him trying to like Be make up for yeah. mis his his perceived mistake. Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming he's taking credit for that goal, even though we both discussed it. It was Tiago not stepping. Yeah. Um. It was Keaton moving was, out of the way. You know, Jason, Jason. not clearing properly. Mm -hmm. Tiago not stepping. Um, Sean just not seeing a soccer ball flying mm -hmm. at him from. <laughs> half field <laughs> um you know there, there was a lot of people to blame in that but i could see how gloucester in his first important minutes of the season you know could take that on his chin and then go and try to first like minutes make I it think. up yeah i think so <laughs> actually I think so yeah first yeah. minute which is a possible a tough a tough go when that situation starts uh Turning. imploding <clears throat> yeah and and you then know, ronnie on the sideline was telling him like yeah stay right here like stay <laughs> yeah. right here this is your position and he's like trying to move and run he's like stay right here this is mm -hmm. your position um i like i said i up until that last goal i think gloucester was you know as 
as good as yeah. you would expect somebody who Nothing has played no minutes. Without. Like, obviously, he's going to get the pass up until that point. But after that, I mean, you know, not controlling the ball, letting it go out of bounds, giving possession to them. You know, like you said, the failed cross, um, you know, falling on the ground with barely any contact. Like, it's CONCACAF Champions League. Get yep. up, take your bruise, go home, show it to your Instagram if you They're have to. They're not going to call it. They're not going to call it. No. So get up. Um, and they're not going to call off sides either on communication <laughs> no, that, goals. They just won't. Which, I mean, to be fair, I do, in my opinion, think like they should probably have won. Does him letting it go, but does him letting that cross uh, go not like he's no longer a factor if he was off sides just because he didn't receive the ball? I'm talking about 33, um, I, I believe, on their third, third or fourth goal. I think third. I the believe it was the third, and he like, was like coming back to the ball and then went back. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I that one. I, in my it's opinion, questionable if not only the first guy was offsides, but then the, the second, second guy, guy that let it go through his legs. Yeah, and I don't and know. And then maybe even the third guy. Yeah, it, that one was questionable to me, but also Sean did let in that goal, and it didn't count. Mm-hmm. Like that was. We don't, Although we'll never have the camera angle, so I guess we'll never know. Yeah, but like, <laughs> but it what would it be like if communication didn't give us a heart attack tonight? I guess, <laughs> I guess we'll never know. know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, dude, there's I don't know. But then, there, so there's a part of you that that thinks, okay, that was a terrible performance. We just got destroyed by a team in their own home, which great. I mean, but at the, then there's the other part of you that's like. Okay, let's let's draw out the map of where we've been since the start of the season, mm-hmm. and you'll see literally New York, L.A., New York, Costa Rica, Connecticut, yeah, Guatemala, and you're like, oh, Four these dudes are in two weeks, Mexico, right? Yeah, like these dudes are exhausted. Just just the travel alone would murder me. I'd mm-hmm. be on, I'd be in bed. And now playing all all of the minutes that they have, and I think. You know, it's crazy that we're however many minutes deep into this podcast. Forgot to start a timer. That's on us. It's, it's very... We might go forever. It is very us of us. But, like, we haven't even talked about the Tati free kick because of, like, what how we had just went through. How was. Like... Well, it just highlights it's how... It's out of this world. Like, the price is going up. It's going to continue yeah, to go is, up. He's going to win the Golden Boot of this tournament. Oh, he, he leads assists and goals. Yeah. He is... Um, Convincingly. I, I think the he's announcer said it guy. himself. He he's trying to put together a Techers tape <laughs> to send to European clubs. <laughs> like the the announcer was so bad, it was actually funny. It's like, tough when it's when you're a one man show. I yeah, would imagine. Yeah, like all respect, he did a he did a good job with what he had, but like mm-hmm. it was very funny. The, it was a little bit of the like meme when it's like you're trying to hit that word count on yeah. the essay. So <laughs> he you're kept just saying he's like. Man, those three goals would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Those three goals. From like the crazy. 20th to like the 45th minute, I think that's all he talked about. Yeah, he's like, oh, man, it would be, be really cool. <laughs> yeah, he then, was, yo, I did not know he was actually manifesting it that entire time. Yeah, he probably was. He has crystals all was, laid out. <laughs> yeah. He is secretly, he's rubbing them. He couldn't think of anything else because in his head, <laughs> he's doing the spell. <laughs> trying to manifest a communicationes it. fan. <laughs> man. Well, well, it's we on, made it through. It's Thanks. on to uh, Club Leon or Seattle. Um, I think either way, it, it doesn't change much about what the conversation is for that matchup. Um, it's going to be tough no matter what. If we look anything like this, it's going to be a sad two legs for sure. Um, and hopefully we can turn it around. I mean, I think one thing to, to sum up this game and then we can dive back into the home opener is now that we've seen the three slash five at the back in practice for a second game, like what are your thoughts on it now? With, with mean, a much different uh, result cracked, than what the code. we saw. Yeah, like that team specifically cracked the code, and um, you know any decent MLS squad is gonna <laughs> peek that and be like, I bet we're gonna do the same. Um, so it's dead. It's done officially. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Um, right I no out. longer bless that formation. I wish it nothing but a very painful not alive anymore. Um, and yeah, I think it's over. I think it's done. I think yeah. we got to move on. I think Gray is close to being back, and that probably is the best thing for us because we get Jason back in a proper position for him. Yeah, because he's he's better than obviously he's going to get credit for it at right back. But 
He's not. He's clearly not good enough to be an MLS right back. He's a, he's a winger. Yeah, it's tough when you give praise to like somebody playing out of position because you are giving it to them with like the unconscious thought that like oh like they're not even that position so like it's amazing yeah. that they're doing average right back work right as not a right back so right. like damn jason's awesome right but, but then we saw his human tonight yeah i mean it, it happens like you're gonna get it exposed at a point especially you know when you're jason in the conca calf uh, environment which is what you brought up like you're gonna go to ground and they're not gonna care um yep. and if that's your game then you're kind of stuck in it right um, well not only but he like the performances that he put in that were great were before teams had tape on how he plays that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, any good team is going to see that tape and be like, okay, you know, in these in these situations, he plays forward. So if you make a run towards that side, we mm -hmm. can exploit it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's, it's not rocket science. He just got, he got too much tape now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and, and transitioning into Montreal, like that was probably some of the tape that, you know, was was used tonight i would i would think i would hope if i was like the communications coaching staff because jason he did look decent and he had an assist at uh against montreal um but it's just like i i one thing that i can't i couldn't understand when we were watching the game live at the home opener we were there um was that like both of the teams that we were watching were ccl teams doesn't that not make any sense no, at all no because i mean we were clearly i mean a clearly. lot like clearly <laughs> yeah far ahead of it was a night and day um which had some some names on there which is one yama which is weird because i don't know you know it made you realize i mean just our position in the stadium alone was kind of hard to determine you know are we just dominating this team or are we just really close to the pitch and yeah. that's all that we can see and like <laughs> i have tunnel vision right now close to the attacking our attacking yeah. side too and seeing you know seeing the goals right in front of you you know you get those rose tinted glasses whereas normally we're much higher up so you see everything mm -hmm. um, and there were some crazy goals yeah like was. thinking thinking back to it trying to forget what like the we Callen's just went goal through was that was class just the the passing and the finish uh, mm -hmm. i mean a great team goal off the volley to finish that first goal of the season uh Last Somebody said, like, um, Callens is continuing his hatred or his vengeance for the soccer ball or something like that. And the boy, <laughs> the boy, I got it customized at, uh, at the stadium, too. Yep. Like, minutes before that yeah. Collins goal goes Be in. Right before the so goal. So, not a fair weather, don't worry. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, actually, I was with him. He uh, he physically watched it and then went straight to yeah, I actually, I actually was getting Tales, and then I refunded it and got Collins instead. <laughs> Just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Refund gate at, <laughs> Refund at the gate, gate 6 Tales. customization station. <laughs> um. Yeah, but, I mean, Collins' goal, crazy. Probably the craziest goal would be Santi's chip. Uh, yeah. That was wild. That was yeah, different. Yeah, just to hear the sound that, that he put on the ball would have made it seem like he barely touched it. Mm -hmm. And then you just see it teardrop right into the back of the net, and that was insane. Um, and those are the things that reinforce, like, your... Uh, your statement and I also your hope that he is gonna become like the next star of our team and yeah. and really he has to yeah there is no option yeah he has for to us be the to guy. succeed like it, it's something that has to happen especially you know with losing Maxi in you know the near future it's something to keep an eye on seeing that man's legs like his calves in person bro nah no weird anything <laughs> like his legs are insane. I, right. do you have, did you see his legs? No, I didn't. Insane. I didn't just look at him for that long. No, nah, but you have to like just peep it and see how strong his legs are. Like it's insane to me. He has to be the guy who is. He's insanely athletic. He is a guy, and I think if, if he if, just piece it together, if he keeps up what he's doing, he's gonna end he's up the being next the guy. guy. Like he's been great, and it, it appears uh, that Tales is the guy too. Like we were talking downstairs when we were watching the game about like you know what do we do after like the tati and maxi era and it's like if things go well with santi and talas they sort of plug in at like a one-to-one -one level of could talas be a, it could becomes be a tati it could be santi there's a maxi. there's a, there's the attackers i think are there to grow the biggest piece is is replacing maxi 
Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely. And then having somebody who, like, not even somebody, hopefully just the team starts scoring, but I think Santi will be end up being, like, the highest scorer yeah. post-Tati. Um, and Tallis, yeah. But I think it could be a number of guys. But replacing that number 10, 100% is, like, that's mm-hmm. it's the biggest thing. Because we, we weren't even creating anything with Maxi off the field. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And I don't know who told Tiago to stop doing the thing that he does really well, which is take the ball and sprint. Mm-hmm. Whoever told him to, like, cut back and pass it to Keaton Parks in, like, your midfield, what, in what world is that the best yeah. option? There's and it, it is his speed that, I mean, exactly that, take the ball and sprint is exactly what got him his goal at the home opener. He, you know, he picked off a pass from a defender and just ran up and then hit it as hard as he could I did at the, the goalie. I did the old man thing where I got mad again about something that we already already covered. Already covered and already stopped. <laughs> you want to re- I reignite? Can't. I can't. That's but no, I mean, that, that goal, that was fun. I almost spilled about $45 worth of uh, <laughs> French fries. Chicken buckets. <laughs> at the fr- From that goal, just because I knew that that was the end of it. Yeah. Do you think that Tavon and Jason get us to July? Or we're gonna have to take us a little bit farther than that. <laughs> you but, think? Yeah, I don't think Tenderholm can play as much as we think he will right away. Yeah, and who knows? Honestly, I mean, this team's track record with and people coming back from injuries is not not great. Positive. So, you know, outside of uh, ZLLM, mm-hmm. who else? You know, but I just yeah, it hope it would have been great to see him get some more minutes tonight. Not, I don't want to jump all the way back right. to the CCL game. But like it's per we have to. He he only played uh like thirty less thirty or less minutes at the home opener. Yeah. Um it was good to see Vuk get in there though. Mm-hmm. Um which I mean having looked, four center backs in at, at one point is a wild thing. And then yeah. to still be conceding two goals. Yeah. It's definitely a scary sight. Yeah. I don't know, uh four center backs, a left back, a right back, uh two all so, oh, right. Over the guy on the right on the side. Right side. <laughs> <laughs> there was a human being over on the right side, yes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than that, there's really, you know, it was a great great win uh, for the home opener. It was good to see, you know, all the people that we did end up seeing and meeting. Yeah. Um, anybody who got a sticker and is, is actually watching this currently, definitely feel free to leave a comment and say, like, I got a sticker and I, I'm here. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool just to kind of track that. And we got a, yeah, we got a ton more. Uh, hand out. We handed out like, who knows, a whole bunch of them. Um, and we have some people on Twitter that saw them that we weren't able to connect with at the game, and like you know, promise that we'll bring them to every yeah every game we go and, to um, and get them out there. You know, the thing is, we we we're always looking for people to give these to. The problem is, we need we need the the other side too to be like, I've seen that dude on Twitter. I've seen that dude on YouTube. Just to like <laughs> walk up to us too. We're 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 normal human beings yeah the 69 subs haven't got to our head yet maybe 69 subs nice yeah and so so you follow know us. it's uh, if we see you we'll find you if you see us definitely find us yeah and sub bust bust the 69 um yeah first one hey if you're 70 first of all we'll ship you stickers if you're 70 if you take a screenshot of you being 70 we'll ship you stickers absolutely. free of charge yeah, no charge stickers are free um, regardless, Ours, but yeah. we will we will cover, cover that. that shipping. Yeah, no charge. No charge. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, just thank you for watching. Yeah, and we'll see you guys at the next game that we attend, and we'll see you guys on Twitter. On Twitter and on Twitter Spaces. Twitter for Spaces. Sure. Um, every single pregame from now on, uh, there's gonna be a pregame space. Yep. For us to you know get our pregame thoughts out, so we don't have so much tension coming into these postgame uh, episodes. Yeah, cool. I feel, like, feel like we waffled. No, Just I, think, I think we're under. I think we're under twenty. Under twenty is fine. Under twenty. When I was talking to everybody at the stadium, you know, everyone that I handed out a sticker to, I, I advertised fifteen to twenty. So I would hate to be a false advertiser. What if what if that waffle just put us over the twenty? editor man gotta get it <laughs> gotta figure it out that's it all right. the show's over we'll show see you guys terrible, next time terrible program <laughs> bye peace <laughs>